Hi, I'm Tracy Wallace. I'm the director of content for Microsoft at INE. And I want to take a couple of minutes to tell you some things you need to know to get started in Azure. So if you are an IT professional and you've been working in an on-premises environment and you want to kind of get your toes wet in the Azure environment, or maybe you're looking to get into IT and you've heard that the cloud is a great way to go, I'm just going to take a couple of minutes here, not very long at all, to tell you some things that you probably want to know if you're getting into this area. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to talk about is what is Azure? So, you know, this is something you've probably heard about. You've probably heard the term, but I really want to dig into this and say, okay, well, what is this? What is it that we want to do with the Azure environment? Right? And really to start, the starting point that I want to go with is, is not Azure at all. It's your on-premises environment. Now, if you're not familiar with IT and networking, then these may not have much meaning. If you are, they're probably pretty familiar, but I'm going to go through them just really quickly so we kind of have a feel for what I'm talking about. Now, this is, let's say that you're at your office and your office has a room or a floor that's a data center, and that's where you run all of your computers, right? All of your compute capabilities. Well, what do we have there? Well, if you think about the entire bag, you've got the physical facility itself, right? You've got the uh, doors and the, the floors and the, the carpeting, maybe whatever it is you have, the locks, certainly the security systems, right? Then you've got the physical infrastructure, right? These are the, the computer parts of that. So things like your networking cables, your switches for networking, your actual computers that are probably in a rack and uh, the power for that. And, and so all of those things that you need physically. Right? And then now in a modern environment, most environments, not everywhere, but most environments have a virtualization system where you might have one physical computer, but within that one physical computer, you have a number of virtual machines, right? And so just let's use the hardware uh, more rationally and more efficiently. And then above that, you have what, even if you're not an IT person, you're probably going to start to recognize, and that's the virtual machine itself. That's, that's kind of like your operating system. So whether it's a Windows operating system, and, and you probably have a computer, whether it's a Windows or box or a, a Linux box or a, uh, maybe an Apple machine, right? And so, you know, you're familiar with that, right? That's, that's where you interact. And, and that's where a lot of people start to think about it. And, and that's kind of, kind of a good thing that we'll see in just a moment, right? But so we have that. And then let's say that you want to have a company website and you're hosting company website. Well, in order to host that company website, you have to have some kind of service that's going to host it, right? You have to have what's called a web server. And then finally, at the top of all this, you finally get to your own workload, right? That would be your web server. So people are coming in and they're getting whatever it is you want them to see. And that's here, right here at the top of that stack. All right. And, and if all of this is running on premises, then by definition, you're going to be responsible for all of this. Right. And what I want to do is, is think about that a little bit. So what are some of the things you would be responsible for? Well, first of all, you're going to be responsible for the cost of the space and the physical security of the space and also the personnel to run just the physical facility, not even thinking about uh, running your computers or running certainly your workloads. Again, think, you know, website, uh, but it, it, you, all of that is going to be there, right? Plus, you have all of these physical infrastructure components that you have to buy, that you have to upkeep, you have to maintain, right? You have to have uh, high availability. So uh, you need to have, you know, multiple instances of everything. Okay. And then also that virtualization layer, right? Whether it's VMware, which is probably the most common, or Microsoft Hyper-V, something that's going to let you run all of these. And in our office, we do have an on-prem data center, and we're running Hyper-V, and we're running virtual machines in that. Okay, But we are responsible for managing all of that. And, and that's really what you have in the cloud environment. Well, guess what you have in, or excuse me, that's what you have on the on-prem. Guess what you have in the cloud environment? You actually have exactly the same things, but there is one key difference, okay? And that is what you're responsible for, right? 
All of the things below a virtual machine, you are never going to be responsible for. That's what the cloud provider does. That's what Azure does. That's what AWS does. Okay? They're providing this. Uh, one way to think about it, if you're an IT person, is you may well be familiar with a wide area network where you've got multiple data centers in different places and those data centers need to communicate and you've got resources in multiple locations. Well, it's kind of like that, where the cloud would just be one of your data centers, except you're not responsible for all of the physical and the virtualization. Okay? Now, there is another uh, component, if you will, that's kind of tucked in there, and that's a management plane. That's just a fancy way of saying some way of managing all of this. Okay? And every cloud provider has this. And most of them have kind of the same thing, whether it's a web interface that you go through, or if it's command line interface for scripting, or maybe your developers can access an application programming interface or API, right? There's some way of managing all of this without having to get into uh, the physical components. Now, there's another thing if you're looking at this that kind of goes hand in hand with that, and that's the cost metric of being in the cloud. Now, I'm not gonna go deep into that. That's not the point of this. Okay, but a key aspect of the cloud and certainly of Azure is that what you're doing is paying for what you use. You're not buying a physical facility. You're not buying equipment. You're not even necessarily paying upfront for licensing. All right, you're going in and, and configuring a virtual machine and you're setting it up for a certain performance level and it's going to cost you a certain amount. Right? And that's going to be an ongoing cost, of course, much smaller than you would pay for upfront licensing. Okay, and so that's really all the cloud is. So it's kind of really not a big deal. It's just the same things you would have on-prem, but it's, as like, people like to say, somebody else's computer, right? And you're just kind of renting it, all right? Now, there's a lot more that you can get into, of course, which is a good thing because that means there's a lot more I can teach, but that's the basic concept. Now, if you take that top bit of it, right? The virtual machines, the services, and the workload, these are all characteristics that are common across cloud. In fact, they're so common that they have kind of broader titles. So for example, you may see something called infrastructure as a service. Okay? And what that means is that all of that lower part, right? The virtualization, everything below, that's being provided to you as a service. But you are responsible for the virtual machine and everything above it. Right, So you're installing Windows in their environment, probably based on an image that's already there. Uh, and then you're installing whatever software you need to run and your workload, and you're managing everything. That gives you a very high degree of control, but also a high degree of responsibility. Now, you could also have the services being managed by the provider, and that's what's known as platform as a service. And that's where the provider is saying, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna really handle everything beneath the workload. All you're gonna do is you're gonna develop your application. Again, an uh, example I use all the time is a web-based application. You're going to build your web-based application and then you're just gonna deploy that. And we're gonna handle everything underneath of it. And it's gonna run and it's gonna, we'll tell you how it's gonna run, right? And we'll give you basic configuration, but it's just things you're not gonna to need to worry about. And then at the highest level, there's what we call software as a service. And software as a service, means that really everything's being provided by the cloud provider. So for example, if you use Microsoft 365, formerly Office 365, or if you use Salesforce or any of other thousands of cloud-based applications, those are often referred to as software as a service. So you have these choices in the cloud, right? And as you go down towards the bottom of the list, you're going to have more control, okay? Uh, as you go up the list, you're gonna have ease of administrative activities, okay? So it's a lot less work to manage, say, Microsoft 365 than it would be to build the same functionality up from virtual machines. On the other hand, if you build everything up from virtual machines, you have a lot more control. So that's the first thing you need to know about the cloud and about Azure, what it is. Now, the next question is, why does Azure matter? Why does the cloud matter? Okay. And it comes down to one word, economics. Okay. Here's some information that uh, we've pulled. Okay. And this is the overall cloud market. And this is not the Azure market. This is the overall cloud market. But it's predicted to be uh, between 250 and 300 billion US dollars by 2021. 
that's that's pretty significant. Okay. Now, why Azure? Uh, because it's significant. Now, I will tell you, uh, you can see where this came from, where I got this graphic from. Uh, the actual proportions of who has how much percentage of the cloud uh, kind of depends on who you talk to, right? Because if you uh, talk to Microsoft, uh, that's probably going to be a bigger slice. If you talk to AWS, Microsoft slice is probably going to be smaller. But what you can see and what is unequivocal is that AWS is the largest provider and Microsoft is the second largest provider in this massive uh, pool of economic growth. Okay. Now that's kind of the big picture, why you might want to think about it as a company, but you know, what about on a personal level, right? You're coming in, maybe you're switching gears, switching careers, right? Take a look. These are, these are just, just, you know, estimated numbers. You can see where they come from. Okay. And you know, we're looking at 127,000. And by the way, if you're looking to get certified, right, then an Azure career Cloud Solution Architect can go up as high as $147,000 as an average. So pretty lucrative field to be in right now. Okay? And, and so that's the what and that's the why. And I want to finish this video out with a how. How can INE help you in your quest to master Azure? Okay, well, we have a full roadmap of learning for Azure. If you come to our INE.com site, you can see that. But I want to speak specifically to our Azure Fundamentals learning path because we have a learning path that's really dedicated to getting you up to speed, to getting that, that foot in the door, if you will, of Azure technology. And again, it's called the Azure Fundamentals learning path. And let's take a quick look at what this learning path consists of. There's three components to the learning path that you would go through. The fundamental component, the foundational component is cloud concepts. All right, and there's a number of cloud concepts. I'm not going to read through them. You can see this, but we really get up to the point of saying, okay, this is what the cloud is at a very fundamental level, and this is how you use the Azure cloud. So you're going to get uh, some hands-on experience and, and really both conceptually and practically understand the cloud. All right? Then we take a look at what are some of the core Azure services that are available to you. So things like what's the overall service architecture so you, you understand how things are provided to you, uh, what are infrastructure and data services, and then also just larger solutions that are available to you. And finally, and, and certainly uh, not least, is Azure security. Okay, what is uh, Azure security? What are we going to talk about? What's there? Identity, well, how is identity handled? handled governance? Even if you're not an IT person, that's something that should make your ears perk up. And of course, security solutions, network security, uh, privacy, uh, compliance and data protection. So these are all topics that we cover in our fundamentals learning path, which is part of our overall uh, INE Cloud Pass subscription. So if you're interested in this, come on over to INE.com and take a look. And thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this video.